Good morning, Streamline Church. If you can please stand to your feet this morning, we're going to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Come on, help us with your hands this morning. Let us sing it out. If you are God and we lift you up, we keep singing, we keep praising, we won't stop giving all we got. Because you're
thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, this morning that you rose because you rising gives us eternal life. We exalt you, almighty King. We lift our voice this morning and declare it hallelujah. Cause 
right there where you're at. Just lift your voice. Just worship him with your own words, with your own heart. Oh, there is much to praise him for. There is much to thank him. song especially on Easter see Easter is the greatest day it is the greatest day that ever happened for for Christianity this is where this is where it all starts this is where it all comes together and when we sing because he lives because he lives check this out that because he lives that same supernatural unexplainable power that raised a dead man to life, that same supernatural power, God says it's the same supernatural power that I have for you in your life. And so because he lives, because he was risen from the dead, I can be risen from my depression. That same supernatural power can give me strength when I feel weak. That same supernatural power when I'm down, can lift me up. That same supernatural power that when I'm sick or I have disease, he makes me whole and he heals me. That is why we sing, because he lives. That with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things, all things, say all things, all things are possible. So we sing, because he lives. I can face tomorrow, no matter what's going on or coming my way, I'm going to step into it because I've got that supernatural power that Jesus has. So can we lift our voice today? And can we be able to take a stand and be able to say, because he lives, I'm here today. Because he lives, God's spirit is alive in me today. So I want us to give this everything we have. You raise your hands. You go after the Lord because, God, I'm so thankful for the work of Jesus Christ on the cross just for me. Let's sing Because He Lives. Because He Lives, I can
turn around this morning, greet someone from the front and the back. We're going to put a minute on that clock, and we're just going to say, we're going to welcome someone and say, God bless you. Amen. Okay, we can try that one more time. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! He is alive. That's right. He's Dad. risen from the dead, and he is alive. Alive. He is Lord. So, hey, welcome to Streamline Church. I'm Pastor Dave, and this is my wife. Good morning, Streamline Church. <laughs> Hey, we're so glad that you're here, and if you're watching online, thank you for jumping in with us. We wish you were here, but that's okay, and we ain't going to judge, but we're glad that you're tuning in, and uh, you're still part of the Streamline family, and we have so many guests today. I love it. Some of you are like returners. We haven't seen you for a minute, but you're here, and I just want to thank you for coming. You're our special guest. Amen. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be in the house of the Lord on Resurrection Sunday. And we just, uh, we're so thrilled that you all came out to join us today. We have a lot of great things in store today. We have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. We have a donut wall, a photo booth. So we are going to have a great time. And you've seen the t-shirts, the Butt God uh, t-shirts, right? How many of you got your Butt God uh, wristband when you came in? If you didn't, we have them for free. But what do the guests do with oh, these guys right okay. here? Okay, well, if you are a guest today, welcome, first of all. Also, um these gentlemen will be walking down the aisle. If you are a guest today, please flag them down, wave them down. We'd love for you to fill out one of these orange cards. They are there for you. Please fill one of them out. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, and so afterwards, after the service, we have a guest lounge right here, and we have some folks that are just welcome you in. If you haven't been here for a while, man, you're a, you're a return guest for us, and we're really glad that you came. So make sure you visit that and you turn that card in today. That is so important for us. 
One thing we do, we believe in here is giving and giving the tithe, the 10% to the Lord. For those of us who are committed our life to Christ, this is just what we do. And so if you have, uh, you want to give today, we have our QR code. You can go ahead and go on there and uh, you can give uh, to the mission of Streamline. And we're so glad that you would help us and grateful that you would help us along to just move the mission forward. Now, um, we also have our, our ushers that are going to come up in a minute. And they're going to be ready to receive the offering as well if you want to dump some cash in or a check in, whatever you want to do. But we're just grateful that you would be a part of giving and helping streamline today. And then we have something coming up here in a couple of weeks. Yes, we have our ladies' night coming up. On Yes, come on, give it up, ladies. Um, April 21st at 630 right here at Streamline Church. We'll be having a really fun night of uh, worship and the word, and also we're going to have an after party. We're going to be playing bingo. <laughs> All right, some of you may think that bingo is just for old here. ladies who knit and crochet. No, I play bingo with preschoolers, and it transcends all ages. We are going to have a blast. So please, come on out. Yeah. You don't so, want to miss out. Uh, ladies, you know what, guys? Uh, we got together on Friday night, and we just had a time of worship and the word, and then we went to Leatherby's, and man, it was such a good time to get to just rub shoulders with one another. And so, uh, man, I'm glad that you came. And ladies, don't miss this opportunity to come together and uh, hang out and get to know others, all right? Let me go ahead and pray for the offering today, and then we're going to move forward in the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for sending your one and only son to shed his blood, to wipe away all of our sins, God, give us a brand new, a fresh start. And today, Lord, we just ask that you would bless the rest of this time. Lord, we want to sense your presence that you're here. Lord, would you stir some hearts today? Would you move us, God? Would you give us more belief and more faith in you and who you are? And God, as we give today, we give the tithe, whether it's online or Lord, whether it's in the offering today. Lord, we pray that you would, you would bless it. Lord, you would bless our church. You would bless our homes because you're just a God who likes to bless. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen our faith as we do that. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the thanks, all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed as you give. Somebody say, but God. That's right, man. That is so much that we're going to learn about today for Easter and the next coming weeks uh, in this series called But God. And it's just my goal today would be if you're new to church, if you're new to faith, if you're new to just learning about God, that you would see that when things are struggles, when there are struggles, when there are difficulties, you can always add at the end, but God. But God has a final say. But God dictate, dictates everything, and we're going to be able to just reach out to the Lord this morning. And so I want to go ahead and lead us into this message today. Are we all right? Is that me? 
All right. Let me go ahead and pray. Father, Lord, we ask that you would help us fix the sound first of all. And, Lord, your hands would be on it. And, Father, I just pray today that, Lord, our faith would be strengthened. Lord, some of us here, God, are carrying some burdens. Some of us here, Lord, we want to celebrate Easter, but there's just so much on our mind. And, Father, I pray today that we would understand what freedom is. Lord, we would understand what true love is. We would understand what hope is. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, would you just bless my lips as I speak today, Lord, and Lord, would you take it even further into the hearts of everyone here and that it'd be personal today. And by the way, Lord, thank you that you are not dead, you are not in the tomb, but you have risen from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, some of you, today I'll just be honest, you're not Christians, Maybe you've slipped away from God. Some of you, you just kind of walked away, haven't given God the time of the day or whatever. Here's what I want you to do. Just forget all of that this morning. What I want you to do is just say, God, I'm going to have open ears and an open, open ears and an open heart today. And God is going to do something great in your life if you just open yourself up. And I believe that already the Lord is moving and just kind of stirring us in our heart today. That's because he wants to get real personal with you. Now, I have to make a confession, and it's, uh, it, you know, I may be making a confession for many here, but I am an emotional driver. I get emotional. I get emotional when I'm driving. That, that just comes with being the best driver, right? That just comes with it, and how many perfect drivers do I have in here? You just run, you're a bunch of liars. I'm the best. I'm the, I'm just kidding. I'm the best. And I'm going to tell you when I, when I get emotional. Now, now I'm going to tell you something. I get emotional, but, but I don't do anything to anybody or say anything to somebody or all of a sudden catch on to sign language, you know, like some of y'all, okay? <laughs> Trying to tell everybody the number one. I hear you. I hear you. But I don't do that. But I'm going to tell you what makes me what makes me emotional when I'm driving. Some of you think it's okay to drive slow in the fast lane. Come on, somebody. I'm, some of you do that. I get emo, You're doing this to me. You're breaking my heart. And, and some of you, we're getting on to the on-ramp. It's time to pick up speed and take off catch up with the other cats. I mean, we're, and some of you think it's just a parade coming off of that thing. How many of you get emotional when you're around somebody like that? I mean, you just run them off the, never mind, never mind. I haven't done that before. And then, and then there's some of you, and Lori thinks I'm paranoid sometimes when I say this, but I really think it's true. When I'm kind of zigzagging through because I'm a professional and, you know, I should have been a, you know, a car, you know, race car driver in another life, but here, here I am zigging and zagging and trying to get ahead. I'm not trying to get anybody's business or whatever. And then you'll, we'll get one of you guys that'll just kind of slow down a little bit. Or when I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to get over, you speed up a little bit so I can't get over. I know who you are. I, I see you. Hey, I got so emotional one time. I, I'm behind a car, and I'm getting, I'm getting frustrated with the way this person's driving. And I'm about to honk when I realize it's my friend, pa Pastor Hector Gutierrez over at Thrive Church. And uh, he doesn't know this yet, but if you would like to tell him, man, he, he, he frustrates me, okay? But I get emotional. And the reason is, it's because I'm headed somewhere. I'm trying to get somewhere. And you know when, when you come to this place to where there's an accident or something up ahead and you see all the traffic stopping and then you're going up and you're like, oh man, where's an exit? You're trying to get off and you're trying to think of other ways. You're pulling out your phone and you shouldn't be on your phone, but you're doing it anyways. You're pulling up a map and you're trying to figure out where to go. But you come to a place where you can't get off and you just come to a dead stop. And I'm trying to go somewhere. It, the only people that know when it opens up 
is the person maybe in the accident or the CHP or the, the tow truck driver. They're the only ones that really know what's going on ahead. And so most of the time, I'm just standing here. I'm just sitting here in my car. And it stopped. It's a dead stop. What do you do in your life when you're at a dead stop? When you're at a dead end? That you want more for your life. You want to go somewhere. You want to have that life that, you, that, you've, that you've lived for, that you want to have, but you're at a dead end. Maybe you're in a dead end in a relationship. You're a dead end because you have conflicts. Maybe it's frustration with your job or, or someone you know or, or whatever's going on. You're just at a dead end. You wish you could get past what's been, had you in a cycle for years. You just want to break through it. And you know what? Only God is going to know what is on the other side and how to get through it. And we're going to remain at this dead end end until we find out what God wants to do, just like the CHP and the tow truck driver. They know the other side. And I want you to see this today. If you don't get anything else, this is the most important thing, is that we see dead ends, but God sees new beginnings. We see dead ends, but God, everybody say, but God. But God sees new beginnings. He sees new beginnings when you're frustrated, when you're upset, when you're discouraged, when you're depressed. But God isn't staying there or going to let you stay there. He's going to strengthen your faith. He's going to give you courage. He's going to give you the ability to overcome if you reach out to him. If you say, God, all of my life, everything I have is going to be in your hands but God. I need when I'm having a hard time in my life, but God, you're not done. If it's not good, he's not done. Oh, that was pretty good. I thought I, I, thought I was at Streamline, my bad. If it's not good, he's not done. All right, all right, you're, you're with me. So we're gonna look at this story, this, this package of scriptures that show us the story of Jesus, the whole purpose of today in celebrating the risen life of Jesus Christ and what it means for us. And then we're going to learn how, man, how I need to have this faith in my life because I've seen how there's been interruptions. I've seen how there's been dead ends. And I need a new beginning. And it started with Jesus. And so hopefully you have your notes today. You can follow along. And we're going to read this series of scriptures here. And it starts in Matthew and it says, this is, this is before he's been prosecuted. This is before he's been betrayed. This is when he's been sentenced. This is after he's been beaten and flogged. They say it was 30 lashes minus one. They believe that 40 lashes, it was 40 lashes and then you were dead. They would beat him within an inch of his life. It says they stripped him and put a scarlet or thorn branches into a crown of and placed a reed stick in his right hand. Now, a, a, reed, a reed stick, what that is, is it's just like an old twig, and what it signifies is weakness. They're saying, oh, you're the king, you need a scepter, because usually they'd have a scepter in their hands that would say, this is what I say, and this is what's going to happen. And they say, no, he's some weak king. They were mocking him. It says, then they knelt before him in mockery and, ta and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and grabbed a stick and struck him in the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they got, it was so bad and so long they just got wasted and tired of it. They took off the robe and put, on his own clothes, put his clothes on him again, and then they led him away to be crucified. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gathered for his clothes by throwing dice. They were shooting craps for his clothes. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head announcing charged against him. It read this 
king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries or two criminals were crucified with him. Left at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until Jesus called out with a loud voice. I'm needing a mic, huh? With a loud voice. Do I need batteries, dude? Is I just not pick good batteries? Did you not pick? This is that's your fault, bro. That's my, your, mis- my mistake, sir. Do we want to try and put another battery in? Yeah. Inside? Here's a mic for you. That's what it is. But God, here we go. Hey. No. Yeah. No. Try it. Maybe so. Just we'll just hold on to this bad boy, and you guys wave to me if I'm if I'm off. But I think it was better. Everybody, give Eli a, a hand, please. But Eli, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Two criminals were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. At about that time, hey, all right. At about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sembachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Isn't it interesting? When Jesus needed a but God, but God. Sir. Then Jesus shouted out again and he released his spirit. He finally died. Jo- Joseph, which isn't his father, but it was another man, it says this took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it, face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, And they fainted. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid. He said, I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He isn't here. He isn't here. He's gone. He is risen from the dead. There's something supernatural that has happened, Mary, Mary is that he is risen from the dead. And that's what we celebrate when we're talking about Easter. And for a few minutes, I just want to talk to you and share some things that are so important for us to know when we're in this time of Easter. Now, I can take this mic off, can't I? Here's something I want you to see. Jesus had to completely die. For him to be completely risen from the grave. He had to completely die for your sake so that you could completely be brought to a new life in him. Now, numbers are significant in the Bible. Numbers are significant because, because it, it's, it's something that are marked out, whether it's number seven or it's number eight, and, and they have all of these. But, but the number three is very significant, and we see it show up here close to the, the resurrection and the death of Jesus. We see this. The number three means completeness. Completeness, like totally taken care of. Jesus, three days later, was risen from the dead. It was completely over. There are, there were three prayers, one, two, three prayers in the garden before, after he was going to be, uh, after he was betrayed, Jesus was praying in the garden and it was confirmation because he said, it's not my will, but your will be done. It was confirmation. We're going through with this. There was one, two, three denials by Peter that symbolized the fall of man. There were one, two, three times that the rooster crowed, signifying the judgment that was to come. There was one, two, three 
uh, um, nails on the cross, signifying God's open love for us. Jesus opened his hands. He didn't close them. There was one, two, three crosses. And on those crosses, what it shows is that he gives us a choice. That it was three hours that he was up there dying and he was taking our punishment for one, two, three hours. And then three hours later, after he died and it said darkness came over, it was pitch black and there was an earthquake. Three hours of punishment he took for us. And then he died for three days, overcoming hell, going through all the pain, going through all the condemnation that we should have. And three days later, he rose from the grave with three victories, death, hell, and the grave. He performed it completely for you and for me to have everlasting life. It was complete. Somebody say complete. But God. And here is the thing. In the scripture it talks about how God is rich in mercy. He has, he has this overwhelming mercy for you and for me. That it doesn't matter how far you go, he's always willing to go far with you. He's always, when you're in pain, when you're in sin, what we call it, when we're doing wrong against God, he's always willing to try and catch up with you and meet you where you are. But when it came to Jesus on the cross, he showed him no mercy. Jesus is saying, why are you abandoning me? Why are you ignoring me? Because you know what, Jesus, if, if I don't ignore you, I've got to ignore them. And he went and he took our place so that we wouldn't be ignored, that we would have everlasting life. That's what he's provided. So, but, but God, but why did he have to do it? Why did he have to be betrayed with a kiss? Why did he have to be denied? And even it says disowned by one of his closest friends. Why did he have to have his beard ripped out of his face? Why did he have to have his body shredded by the beatings that he would go through? Why did he have to go through this barbaric death of having nails put up to a cross and then he, leaves, he stays there lifeless? Why did Jesus have to go through that? Because he went to suffer so you wouldn't have to. He went to do that to suffer for all of your whys. Why, God? Why do I have this? Why the pain? Why the frustration? Why can't I have it? All these whys, he did it for you. For you personally. For you individually. He did these things. For you, everybody say, but God. And there are some things that I want to, I just want to bring to our attention that really reflect different places that we're at in our lives at times. Different things that we have going on that we voice in, in times of just, you know, emptiness and void. Have you ever said something like this? I've experienced losses. I've experienced losses, but God is good. Hear me today, I've experienced losses, but God is still good. I don't know how he's going to be good, but I believe that God's going to be good. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever gotten to this place before. To, you know, you may have losses. It may be a death. It may be your health. It may be a career or a business. You may have gone through hell and you've just experienced loss after loss after loss. Isn't it so funny after, at time, we get to a, this place, they are like, God, where, where were you? God, God, why weren't you there? You see, you say you're God and, and supposedly you're supposed to be good. But God, where are you? And so many times I believe it's this, it's this, is because we get upset that God wasn't there when we never invited him in the first place. 
But if we would have invited him, he would be right there with us. And then we get upset because you weren't there. When God says, I want to be a good God, but you got to invite me in. And I'll come. And I'll help you in your loss. And I'll be good to you when it's difficult. It says this in, in uh, Psalms, this scripture. I want us to see, but God. Everybody say, but God. But God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. When I feel dead, when I feel empty, when I feel like at a loss, he will redeem my life. You know what that means? Is that everything I've lost, he will bring it back and he will fill it and he'll give me good. And even today, right now, You can make a decision to say, you know what, God? I'm going to invite you in right now. I'm going to invite you in. God, I need you to be good. I need you to be good to me right now. As a matter of fact, you can pray this prayer because he says it redeems my life. You can even say this. God, would you even give me all the goodness that I missed and bring it to me now? Because he wants to give you more than just what you have now. He wants to give you everything. I've experienced loss, but God is good. Or maybe you're saying, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. But God never fails. God won't fail you. God will not fail you at all. And and we go through times of hurt and pain, and and maybe there's heartache. Maybe there there are some things that have happened to you in your life, and you're just bruised or Maybe some of you are going through times of loneliness right now. You feel distant. You feel like nobody cares. You wonder why God isn't there and you're hurting and you're like, I just need someone to care for me. When God wants to be in that very place with you and he won't fail you. That you may feel like you're too weak and you're too out of gas and you can't make it. But then God wants to come in. Check this out. And all the burdens and all the things that are heavy, God wants to come in and give you strength for that. But God. When you are weak, but God. Can be and will be there for me. The scripture in Psalms. I think we missed that slide there. Psalm 73, 26 says, "My my health may fail. And my spirit may grow weak. I'm empty and out of gas. But God, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. I want you to see a key word right here. Remains. When I feel like things are falling. When I feel like I'm weak. When I feel like I don't have it in me anymore. God remains. God remains the strength of my heart. He is going to help me move forward when I feel like there's confrontation or there's difficulties ahead or there's barriers ahead. God is going to be my strength. Even now, I want you to see this. Jesus said this when he was alive and he was going through and he was preaching and he was, he was setting people free. He was healing people. All of this. He said, look, Take my yoke, take my burdens. It's light. Take my burdens. And as a matter of fact, I want you to take that on. Now give me your heavy ones. Because I want you to know my strength is going to help you through and I won't fail you. Today, some of us have a hard time with trust issues with God because our trust has been violated and destroyed by other people. And you're saying, they failed me. They did me wrong. But you can trust God. He will remain. He will not fail you, but it's time to give him a chance to say, God, I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you my life, and I'm going to begin to trust you. Because where I see dead ends, God sees new beginnings. That's the but God. But God sees new beginnings. And we may be in a place where I've experienced losses or I'm hurting or even maybe we get to this point when we're in the church or we're hearing scripture or we're hearing someone talk about God, whatever it is, and we realize I've been selfish. 
but God still loves you anyway. I've been selfish. That's what, that's what sin, we talk about sin missing the mark and what Jesus went to die for because it's sin. It's the things that are against God that keeps us from a relationship with God, which keep us from eternity with God. It's sin and it's found in selfishness. It's found in doing what I want. See, when we sin and we are selfish, what we're saying is, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to get what I want. And when we have this mentality with sin and selfishness, because how many, I'm selfish. I can be selfish. I've been selfish. I've lived a selfish life. I've done that and I've had to correct it somehow, but the whole time it was like I'm doing it my way. When God's ways are like this, I want you to see this. God's ways are best. Someone needs to hear this. God's ways are the wisest. God's ways are the most fulfilling. God's ways are the most inspirational ways. God's ways are harmless. There is no waking up the next morning and what did I do? There's waking up. The Bible says that there's joy in the morning. It never stops. His ways are good. But some of us, we just want to be selfish. We get stuck in selfishness to where nobody's going to tell me. It's my life. I know this isn't you. I'm talking about someone else you know. This is my life. No one's going to tell me. It's not hurting anybody else. This is me. That's where we get to this place to where now it's, it's my life, it's my way, it's selfish, but it's going to hurt you in the end and you get everything you want and we push God out, his ways out and we're living a selfish life, a sinful life, but I want you to see this. He still loves you in that mess. The Bible says this, that he became my sin. He became my bad comments. He became my bad thoughts. He became my bad behavior. He became my bad attitude. He became my immorality. He became my drunkenness and my filth. He became all of these things. And the only reason why someone would be willing to do that is, is I love you too much to leave you that way. And if I've got to be your sin and crucify it, then I'll do it so you can live. It says right here in Romans, but God, everybody say, but God. But God showed his great love, great love. For us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While you were in the middle of it, while you were enjoying your ways, while you were putting God off and saying no. When you'd say, I want to live my own life, and you'd put it there, he would still, I want you to know this. By the way, he would still do it all over again even right now. He loves you too much to stop. He didn't love you when you were at your worst and he can't love you anymore at your best. He just loves you all the way across. And what a terrible thing to fall into the hands of God and be judged and find our way headed to hell when if we just accepted the love of Jesus on the cross and I have eternity with him, that your ways are higher than mine and your ways are best. But we can find selfishness. And sometimes we go from my life is, I've been selfish to where my life is a mess. My life is a mess, but God hears you today. 
Some of you came in this room. You were invited by somebody. You thought you would come and do them a favor. All right, they asked. Last Easter, I ignored them. And, you know, you, you finally came. Or you've been hesitating coming to church. You've been putting other things before church just to hear God. And you've got a real mess going on. You've got things falling apart. You've got, you've got trouble that you made for yourself. You've got the DUI. You got the marriage that's in a bad spot. You have failures. You have messes that you have made. And you just wish that someone would help pull you out. You're, in, you're trying, you maybe you're suffocating and you, you wish that you could have help to get out of it. And you know what happens too most of the time? We're pretty hard on ourselves that if I made the mess, then I got to clean it up. I did all this. I ruined the relationships. I hurt those people. It's my fault. I can never talk to them again. I wish I could, but now I'm living a lonely life and, and we're, we're in a mess. And my life is a mess. I want you to know that God is listening for you today. He wants to hear you if we would just invite him. And I want you, someone needs to hear this today. Is that your condition in your life doesn't scare God off. What you have done, the things you have brought in place, and all the mistakes and all the crimes or whatever it is, it doesn't scare God off. As a matter of fact, he's drawing closer to you to say, let me clean the mess up. But we have the choice. Are we getting, you, know, you know, nobody likes to invite somebody over when their house is a mess. Right? So, some of you don't give a rip. You're like, whatever, it's lived in. <laughs> But for us, you know, good folks, some of us are like, I don't want them coming in my mess. Man, this person's sophisticated. I mean, man, I've seen their house, and I've seen. God doesn't care about that. He's like, I know I'm, I'm divine, and I'm holy, and I'm righteous, and I'm life, and in life, there is no life anywhere else. I know I'm that, but I don't care about the mess. Let me come in and clean it up and give you a new life. And it says in the book of Psalm, but God listened. He has heard my prayer. God hears what's going on in your heart today. God's, God hears the confusion right now. God just wants to be invited in. God hears, are you willing to call out to God and say, God, all right, I'm opening up myself to you. I'm not trying to do this anymore. I'm, I'm just wasted. I'm tired. I'm worn out, God, from trying to do this. Would you begin to give God more attention than you give your mess attention? Say, God, from now on, my attention is going to be on you because that's the way God would have it. Ignore your mess. Just give me attention and let me fix the mess and I'll give you a new lie. That's the kind of God we have when we have the selfishness, when we have the losses, when we have the, the failures and the defeats, when we have uh, all of this, the sin, and we have the, you know, our life is a mess. When we have all that, God is like, I'm still there. Would you just reach out to me and, and let me do it? What a sad case that we would just say, no, God, I'm good. Peace. And some of you, if I can just be personal, you've been pushing God out way too long. And I, that's for, for some of you, that's not for you. But for some of you, you're like, I've just kind of been putting up a wall or backing off or putting other things first. And today God would say, would you, would you just invite me? Would you call out to me? I want to come in. I want to do a work. Your storms your defeats, your failures, your discouragement, your losses, your heartache. Would you, would you just invite me and call me in? Today I've got a couple cans. They're same size cans. One is empty though. 
and then one is full. And you know, we have, it doesn't matter what size our heart is or who we are, we face the same storms. But if we don't have the presence of Jesus, we haven't invited Jesus to be in our life, it's going to be hard to make it through that storm. We're not going to have a but God. What we're going to just see is it's just a dead end, but God sees new beginnings. And I want you to, here's what happens when the, when the pressures of life come. This is real important. Make sure we get this on the camera so they can see my, my feet. But th- this, is, this is what happens when we're missing it. It's crushing our life because it was empty when we went through storms and we went through battles and we went through challenges. We could not make it through. We were at a dead end when God is saying, would you just give me a buck, God, and you'll see new beginnings? Would you just allow me? And see, here, here's the difference. That makes the same size, the little, the little mini soda. That when it's full, it can take the weight and the same storms, the same challenges, the same pain, the same heartache. Everything is the same. All that you go through, the sin and all that's climbed up and, and mounted up and the, the guilt and the shame and all that has gone with it, it's still the same size. It's still the same you. The difference is, is that you have filled your life with the life of Christ, the work of Christ and what he's done. And that makes all the difference. That's where it comes. This is what it is. And if you and I today would just say, God, I'm tired of living at the dead ends. And God, now I just want a new beginning in you. He's like, number three, it's time to complete your life. I want to share with you this scripture as we close in Ephesians. And this is talking about how we all did our own thing. We all went our own way. Jesus went and died for all the sin, all the things that were wrong. And it says this. You did it. No, I'm just kidding. It's all your fault. We all did it. We all, there's not one person in here that hasn't done it. All of us doing what we felt like doing. When we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. He had that right. We didn't deserve anything more but God's mercy. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did this all on his own because he was full of love, wanting to hear you, wanting to be with you, not failing you at all, and being good to you in your life. The question is, will you say, God, just like that supernatural power that you say Jesus had, I need that same supernatural power to come into my life and clean up the mess. Would you close your eyes for a minute? Maybe maybe we can all stand together. But some of you, let's stay in the sacred moment if you could just close your eyes for a minute. Some of you, you just sense something happening in your heart today. I want you to know it's not me that's speaking. It's the Holy Spirit saying, would you let me come in? And would would you let me bring change into your life? And if today you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, you know that, man, this is connecting. This is resonating. This is what I've sensed. This is the hope. This This is the strength that I've been looking for. Today, I just want to pray with you. Would you raise your hand today? I just want to pray with you. Nobody's looking around. Yeah. Yeah, so many hands. Anybody else? No one's looking around. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Amen. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. 
All right, Lord, right now, Lord, we're tired of the dead ends. We're tired of living for those. We're, we're tired of expecting the dead ends. Lord, would you give us a new beginning today? Lord, may we not hold on to the past thoughts and the regrets and the memories, but Lord, may we only look to your truth and what you say and what you desire for us, that Lord, you are a healer. Lord, you are a forgiver. Lord, you are a lover. Lord, you are patient with us. It doesn't matter how far we've gone. You come immediately to us. So Father, I pray. Lord, I even pray this, that this wouldn't just be a one-time deal, an Easter Sunday deal, but we would say, tomorrow I'm going to begin to trust God with my life. And the day after that, and by the way, next Sunday I'll be here because I'm giving him, I'm giving him full access into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I want us to just, to just, before we go today, can we sing Because He Lives? That supernatural power, what you want, no more dead ends with a new beginning. Let's sing this together with the worship team. Let's just stay right here where we're at. Uh, worship team, if you can continue to play in the background, um, just stay in his presence for a second. I mean, it's Easter Sunday. And what an amazing time on this day that we remember how much Jesus gave for us. 
that we have the opportunity to give him our life back, our salvation, give, to just ask for that salvation in our lives. And so this morning, I, we want to give you that opportunity. If you're in this room and, and you know, you've been a little distant from God or maybe, maybe you've never, never known God, never known Jesus as your personal Savior, we, we don't want to leave this place without giving you the opportunity to know him. And what a great day to do that on. So if you're in the room right now and the message of Jesus Christ is nudging at your heart, would you just raise your hands to say you want to accept Jesus in your life? Yes, I see your hand. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, come on. He loves you so much that he died on the cross for you and for me. Is there anybody else? We're just going to hang out here for a second. It's, it's important. He can change your life in an instant. For those who raise their hands and then everybody else in the room, would you just say this prayer along with us this morning? Dear Lord, please repeat after. I ask you to come into my life and make me new. I choose to trust you. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You washed away all my sin. Now I leave my life of sin. I believe you rose from the dead to give me a new life, purpose, and eternity. I ask you to be my Savior. Today I make you the leader of my life. Thank you for new life. And now you have mine. Amen. Amen. Everybody give a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 You know, if you raise your hand to this morning, um, we want to encourage you in the seat back in front of you is a little card like this that says, I said yes to Jesus. I want, we want you to grab that and either give it to an usher, leave it on your seat, or bring it back to the, to the guest lounge because we want to connect with you because now it's time to have a walk with Jesus Christ, right? Can we get the house lights up for a second, please? Um, you know, this was an amazing service, and it's an amazing time to celebrate something that is incredible. And if you're a guest, earlier today we talked about those orange cards. If you're a guest or a visitor, or maybe you brought a guest with you, can you do us a favor? Bring that guest to the guest lounge. We want to connect with you guys, get to know you a little bit, like plug you in, you know. I think it would be amazing. And so thank you for being here this morning. Um, I'm going to pass this off to Tara. Hi, guys. I'm Tiara. I'm the administrator here for Streamline Church. We just want to say thank you so much for choosing to be here on this special Sunday. Um, we have a whole bunch of activities out there for you guys. The first thing we're going to do is our Easter egg hunt. Miss Lori will be out there to guide the kids. We just want to make sure you guys grab your kids as soon as possible and head out to the front and then line them up by either their signs out there for their age or their, uh, their grade. So go ahead and line them up, and then we'll start that. And after that, you guys can head to our donut wall and our photo booth to take some pictures with the family. Thank you so much. Oh, and I will be out there selling our But God t-shirts. You can get one for $20 or you can get two for $35. So make sure to see me out there. Thank you, guys. We're all sharing mics. <laughs> Everything's going. All right. Thank you, Tierra. We're so glad that you're here today. One thing, one thing that we're doing just spur of the moment is I just spoke with a few people in the last couple of days, and we just decided, man, we have to have some baptisms. And so some of you, maybe you haven't been baptized and you've given your life to Christ. Maybe there's some of you, you you're at a new place in a significant place to where it's like, you know, I need to do that to just demonstrate that Jesus is risen in me in a new way. There's a change happening. Or maybe today you made a decision. You say, Jesus, you're Lord of my life and I'm going to go ahead and take the next step. Tomorrow night, just totally spur of the moment. At 6.30, we're going to have baptisms, baptisms right here. 
And so we're just, you don't, you don't even have to respond or do any kind of QR code or anything. If you show up tomorrow night, you can get baptized and bring anybody you want to bring. And if we have five people, we have five people. If we have 20 people, we have 20 people. But we're just going to celebrate the life change that God has in us. And so if you want to get baptized tomorrow, you can do that. A couple of key things. Number one, bring a towel. Number one, get, you know, bring dark clothes when you get baptized. We don't want any surprises. And then the other thing is bring a change of clothes. And what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate you, the new life that we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me send you out with a, with a blessing today, and then you can enjoy just being with us before you leave today. We're going to have a great time together. Church, you are God's treasured possession. Your heavenly Father is proud of you. He watches over you, and he will take care of you. He will have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and he will help you. Because of Jesus Christ, you can be anything and you can do anything. You are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. You are a difference maker. Nothing can take away God's greatness in your life. Help me out. You are blessed. Amen. God bless you guys. Happy Easter. <laughs>